Chris, first off, why uh, why come back for six seasons? Um, I felt like it was the best thing to do for me in my future. Uh, I still got a lot of development to do, uh, get better daily. I got a lot of things I got to focus on within myself. And I feel like I can come back and lead the young guys as well, all around the team. So um, I was kind of set on, I was kind of in and out of which decision I wanted to make, but I definitely made the right decision for myself, my future, and this team. So I, I was glad I came back and could do one more for the Golden Gopher. So. How much did Sharaka coming back influence your decision? Um. Kind of, it was kind of a big, a big, big influence for sure. Um, I've been close with Soraka since I, since Western Michigan. Uh, coming back, it's kind of happy seeing him come back and everything. So uh, he came back. He kind of played a bigger, bigger role in it. But you know, it's kind of just still my decision in a way. I kind of kept it for myself and make myself uh, make the decision for myself. So um, he did play a huge role. That's my guy still. So yeah. For those that might not know, what do you think makes Soraka stand out as a coach? Um, he all, he's super locked in and focused on the details. Um, Soraka doesn't let anything fly. If it's sloppy, we're coming back. So I saw one thing I love about Coach Soraka is because he's super on point. Everything's just perfect. Everything has to be, you got to enact the perfection. It's all about details, man. So that's one thing I love about him. He's detail oriented all the time. So, so Tanner, Mo, and uh, John Michael are all coming back out of that class. What, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, it's awesome. I get to run it back one more time with the guys I came in with. So it's always special to think about and, I'm glad I can do it with those guys. I wouldn't want to do it with any other guys in, in the country, so I get to do it with my guys, so, yeah. You mentioned you want to keep improving going into year six. What areas of your game are you going to be spending a lot of time on this offseason? Um, I can get better at everything I do now. Um, I think flexibility will probably be one of the biggest things for me, running fluently more, my speed, and just getting open more and creating more space. So it's a lot of things I can get better at. Um, I just got to take it step by step, day by day, and I'll get there. Going against him in practice, were you impressed with how quickly Justin Wally transitioned, just being a true freshman to, oh, yeah. to this level? Uh, I've battled with Wally since the first day he came in. Uh, he's been a, he's he's a football player, man. He's a real football player. Special, fast, physical, does it all. And as you can see, he's all American as a freshman. So, you know, he's we got a another special guy on our defense to, to lead that team. So, shout out to Wally. What do you see in West Virginia's defense? How much you break it down? Where you at with that? Uh, they play great. That's a that's a physical sound. They play together. They play. With each other, physical, fast, skillful. It's a, it's a great defense. Uh, we, don't, we don't sleep on any of our opponents. Uh, I watch a lot of film on them. They fly around the secondary. Very skillful. Uh, very, very skillful. Very at all. So they're a very good defense, and I can't wait to play against them. It's been a couple of years since you guys had the bowl experience. Do you think it's going to be different with just COVID and protocols and all this happening in the last couple of days? Uh, I think we're super excited to have a bowl again. You know, get to play that last game together as a, before we take on the new team in 2022. So we're all excited to get out of Arizona and just play ball with each other one last time. So when you look at Dalen Wright, I mean, what areas of his game, whether it's on the field, off the field, need to keep improving for him to take that next step? Um, I think with Dalen, it's all about his mindset and knowing that he can do it every play. Um, he's a super, a super skillful player. I don't think I've ever seen anyone with his body type or the way he's played and how he attacks the ball and his plays fluently. He looked like I would to have Dalen's body and his as athleticism is just I would I would die for it. So, but uh, no, he's a, I tell him every day, dude. You can really be the best player out here and the best player to ever leave here if you just put your mind, get your mindset right, and work every day at it. You can be like one of the greatest. So I tell him all the time, and I think for him it's just getting his mindset right and training his mind before his athletic ability. So. Other young receivers in the wide in the wide receiver room that have impressed you in practice? Um, I can say them all. You know, it's the game that we play is super hard. Football is a hard sport. It's a hard mental sport. It's a hard physical sport. And I think these young guys that I've seen grow since January to now, I think seeing them get better every day, it, it, it makes me happy as a leader. You know, seeing these guys get better and do things that they didn't do back then. So I can say it for all the, all the wide receivers, every last one of them, they've gotten better since January, and I'm I'm proud of them, and I hope they keep it going. This will be your third bowl game here with the Gophers. What stands out about, out about the other two that you played in? Um, you know, the Outback Bowl was definitely a good one. Um, the one in Detroit was definitely a good one as well. I think this, they, I mean, bowl games definitely they they difference in whatever, however they rank and this and that. But I think this being in the bowl games, especially you know, being able to play in that last game of the year, that you know, it's just it's just awesome. So I um, think it's all it's definitely differences between each one. But you know, I don't really see it. It's just the bowl game. So. so. With like Lemecki and Doug, I mean, where do they need to keep continuing to grow if they're going to crack the rotation? Uh, 
Lameki and Doug, I see those guys. They've definitely been getting better, especially over the bowl preps as well. So I'm um, a thing with those guys too. I think it's just I think it's just for the young guys. It's just training their mind. You know, I think this. I think people don't understand that football is more of a, a mind game than a physical game. You need the physicality for sure. But I think training the mind. I think for those two, Lameki and Doug. Training their mind, just like Dalen, just getting their mind right and being f mentally tough is the biggest thing for them. They can do they can do anything. They can run fast, they can catch these balls, run these certain routes and create space, but it's just having that certain mindset to do it each and every play, do it each and every play, do it again, do it again, do it again. So I think just getting their mindset is the, is the biggest thing. How long did it take you to develop that? Did um, you come I in think, with that day one? No, I, didn't, I definitely didn't come in with it day one. I had sparks of it. I showed here and there, but I think for me now, I think I've, I've shown I can do it Consistently now, being consistent with it daily is the biggest thing. So I think I've got it around 2020 is probably when I started to really lock into a certain instinct and say, all right, I got to be this way, certain play every day. Um, Coach Simon literally showed us a clip of uh, I don't know if you guys seen it. It was the Kevin Garnett and Ray Lewis clip. You got to be a little crazy in the head to just do this thing and do it and play football and be be a certain way. So I think I took that clip and really ran with it and just you know what I'm saying be different on the field and have a certain mindset that, all right, I'm making every play and I can't be stopped. And just that's what I ran with it. So I think it got into me, especially this past year, and I think I'm going to continue it and run with it, especially next year. When you won the bowl game in Detroit three years ago, how important was that to set the tone of the following season? Where you had oh, it's, always, it's, it's, it's definitely a huge set, uh, tone setter. Uh, winning that last game, sparking and sending into the next season, you know, getting into those winter workouts and making yourself even hungrier. Then you go to spring ball and you go to summer workouts in the fall camp in the season. It's just, it's like a, it's like an extra boost to, to the, to the next season. So it's always, it's always something to win the next, the, the, the last game of the season. So um, I think that's what we plan on doing and that's what, we're, that's what we should do. So. How much, what are the differences between these bowl practices and just like a regular week of practice yeah. preparation kind of um, practice? Is you gotta you gotta really get out of yourself, I man. It's bowl prep, you know, the game is far out, but you're just practicing. So that's what I that's what I come back to the, the mindset of having a, a a super strong and tough mindset and having being mentally tough. So you gotta be locked in daily. You know, you know the game is far out, but I still gotta get better here, like right here, right now, and get better. So um, it's just like I said, it's having a, a super tough mindset, and that's that's what it is. State. I mean, you guys practice through Christmas because of the time in the game, or you leave before Christmas practice down there. What do you do? Uh, we leave Thursday. So I, is it before Christmas? The 23rd. Yeah, we leave before Christmas. So and we get there. I, I think, and just whatever the schedule they get us, we're gonna do it. So. Chris, DJ talked last week about you being part of the Encore Four with John Michael, with Tanner, with Mo about you know this, the decisions to come back for next season. What were those conversations like in November as you tried to make your decision for next year? Um, you know, I think. One, I want to say I thank my coaches for not – they didn't, you know, jump on our backs about the decisions. They let us finish out the season strong, and then we had those conversations, like, after Wisconsin before the bowl prep. So I think I respect those guys and love those guys the most because they literally let us focus in on the season, focus on it right now, and be in here with our teammates rather than making the decisions. So um, those decisions, those conversations were definitely – they were hard to have. You know, we had our differences. We have our certain talks. But at the end of the day, we all made our decision, and we all came back to do the right thing for us and our futures and our team, our team as, as a team. So – um, they were hard conversations, but it's a conversation that you love having, and it, I think they build more of a bond with you and the person you're having them with. So, what was the biggest reason you wanted to come back? Um, the biggest reason I wanted to come back was to prove to myself what I can be and what I can show. So I plan on really showing something that I don't think anyone's ever seen next year, and I plan on being that player. So I think I wasn't proving I wasn't coming back to prove it to the world or prove it to the. I came back to prove it to myself because I didn't. Ha I don't think I don't think I had the season I wanted to have this year. So I plan on having that next year. Two more for Chris. Anyone's got it? Chris, when did Kai or, or Bucky first show you that they could keep the same level as, as Mo and Trey had? Fall camp? Yeah, I, I seen it in the fall camp. Uh, they, you know, we when we have, we have our road first period and the young guys get in, they showed us that they can play ball no matter what it was. So I knew when I, you know, when, when Mo went down, it was obviously sad, it was devastating, but I knew that I, we were in good shape regardless. We had Trey, we had Bryce, we had Bucky, we had Kai, we had all these guys. So I knew we were in good shape regardless, you know. And I know with that, how that running back room works and how they're led and with Mo and Coach, Coach Burns, I knew we were going to be in good shape regardless. I didn't even stress it at all, so. Why was it important for you to put your head in the huddle or the injury tent when Mo went down? Why was that something you wanted to do? Uh, that's my brother. Um, I'm, 
I'm living in about mode. I'm I'm gonna die for mode. Simple as that. That's my guy. Uh, we came in. We didn't talk to each other at all. But now nah, I talk to him every day. And that's if he's down, I'm down. If I'm up, he's up. It's just like that. So it's whatever he has, I have. If I have it, he has it. It's really like just cohesive. You know, that's my brother. That's really my brother. So, um, but if he, when he was down, I felt something me go down. So I had to step in that tent to make sure that he was up and he'll be all right. And you know. Yeah, he, he, he'll be fine. So at the end of the day, that's just my brother. And I, if you're my brother, I'm going to do anything for you, make sure that you're up with me, and I'm going to lead you to the right place. So that's what I wanted to do. Okay, for Chris. All right. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thanks,